Hi, and welcome to Unfinished Business, a show where five nerdy girls with arts degrees, we all have arts degrees, right? Yeah. I mean, basically. Yeah. Aaron, yours is technically music, but that's an art. Shh. While five girls with arts degrees attempt to make a watchable D&D show with no budget, and no rights to anything. I don't know what kind of legal trouble we're going to get into, so stay tuned for that. Um, we also might not get into any kind of legal trouble because literally only our family and friends will probably watch this. What a ringing endorsement of this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not sponsored by anyone, but we do utilize D&D Beyond and Roll20 for our gaming needs. And I don't know if I have to say this or put it anywhere, but unfinished business is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy, not approved or endorsed by wizards. Portions of the material used are property of Wizards of the Coast. Uh, and then it's the cop, I guess it's the copyright sign. It's not an at symbol. Wizards of the Coast LLC. If you're a family friend or stranger, welcome to Param, a planet created by the shape shifting deity, Param the Laughter. Yes, they named the planet after themselves because why wouldn't you? This is our first session of this game. So tag along as our players learn exactly what they've signed up for in Unfinished Business. <laughs> Cue opening theme. <laughs> subscribe so that we feel uh less like failures bash that okay. alarm oh yeah, yeah. Those there's notifications like a, there's a notification button hit it i know where it is it's on the screen somewhere you can hunt and, hunt and click for it yeah. it's everywhere all right are you girls ready to get into you. this it's well you know what if you have to search inside of you during this show i guess that's what you have Good. to do Aww. here we go Everybody close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Yeah. All right. Do we re really? You can open, you you can open your, your eyes. eyes. You can open your eyes when I say ding, okay? Ding rings a bell as your body is suddenly popped into a firm fabric covered chair. Looking down, you see the fabric is a semi-crazed pattern of muted grays, greens, and purples. Uncomfortable in its firmness, the hard plastic arms hug you just a little too tight. The chair just slightly too small for your frame. Looking around, you see a long winding line separated by standing fabric barriers. The entry to your left, a bright pink sign with friendly black letters suggests, please have ID ready. The slightly too low ceiling has a recessed light worked into its surface, a perfect rectangle insert about six inches from the wall. Its caustic light reflected in the shiny black tiled walls and white and black tiled floors. On the right wall, the black tile is interrupted by a gaudy golden shrine, above which sits a large portrait of a man with a Garious double chin and a dour expression. His oiled hair is slicked back under a pompous hat. Everything about him screams wealth and insecurity. Below is a small golden plaque that reads, Timmy Timorius the Dictator, <laughs> beloved brother. He sought gold and power and received enough knife wounds to be straight up murdered. <laughs> Rip. Oh. The shrine is littered with gold, baubles, several notes, and it might be blood splattered. You're not sure from here. At the other end of the serpentine fabric line is a small window set into the wall. A bored purple dragonborn wearing a set of bone antlers is thumbing through a book. 
on either side of the window are two huge antlered skeletal beasts set into the wall like art pieces. Their heads seem to be curling towards the window. So the giant skeletons are like in two crescents on either side, curling in towards it. A whirring machine starts up somewhere and in front of you, a giant skeletal monstrosity, not unlike the art pieces, places a book on an invisible table and turns its antlered skull towards you. Oh, <laughs> sorry, didn't see you there. I'm the darkness. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna eat your soul yet. I'm just here to help you transition to new life. It walks through the fabric barriers and you notice you can see through the image. You heard me right, new life. <laughs> it means what you think it means. You're dead, but don't worry. We in the afterworld understand that most of the people who die on Param do so with unfinished business. The skeleton, oh, the skeleton reshapes itself into that of an antlered jackalope. I'm sure you're familiar with this little trickster, Param, planetary deity. <laughs> the darkness returns to its original many skeleton form. You notice now that the darkness is not one, but all skeletons mixed and added together like some kind of grotesque misshapen toy. <clears throat> well, consider me Param's foible. While they like playing tricks on everyone, I only want what you want your timely return to Param. Unfortunately, Param in their great wisdom decided to hamper my progress with red tape. <laughs> Deities, am I right? Anyway, cue up my dears, you're dead. And there's only one way out of this room at least. The darkness waves goodbye as their image is replaced by a rotating pink and black sign that says, welcome to Afterworld. Looking around, you notice three other people sitting in chairs lining the wall. Megan, would you please describe what the others see? You see um, a tall tabaxi sitting in a chair that's too small for her. She has um, brownish orange fur with a mix of tiger stripes and leopard spots. Um, she wears a lilac shawl over her head and is carrying a lute in one of her hands. And uh, she looks confused, annoyed, and frustrated. Um, and I don't think she is even looking at the people around her because she's trying to figure out what is happening. All right, Erin, you're sitting next to this tall cat. What do you look like? Uh, so uh, opposite physicality, uh, uh, you see a, an older gnome before you with like sort of light brown skin, uh like crazy out of control white hair um somehow with like a perfectly pristine handlebar mustache uh like but everything else is chaos um he looks like uh the hair like would normally be crazy but is like actually super crazy right now as if almost like there had been some kind of like electrical something that had like affected it in some way he's wearing a lab coat uh and uh these goggles that like have like flip over goggles that you can put to like magnify things um they are also covered in like soot uh and uh he has like taken off like a couple of levels of the goggles and there's just glasses underneath 
Um, and throughout like the second half of this conversation, he has been just writing notes in a notebook. Um, he's probably shorter than the chair. So I would imagine his feet are like dangling a little bit from the floor. Excellent. And next to him sits Dyer. Would you like to introduce your character? Uh, is she like, Back. Stuck. Is she stuck in a chair that is too small for her? Yes. No, is she like... Um... She is how she would remember herself to be. Okay, so you not... So you can, you can decide, you can decide if you want her to look the question we're talking around or not. <laughs> That's uh... up to you. <laughs> Do you want me to come back to you? Next to yeah. her is actually yeah. Leticia's character. <laughs> Let me think that through. Next to the next to the short gnome is um, a fairly tall elf, um, long white hair, um, super travel worn clothes that include um, a cape and well looked after, but definitely well used and um, a little bit scuffed scale mail. Um, also, she has. Um, like one, her right sleeve is long, but her left sleeve is shorter. Um, and I guess it would be Dyer's character saying to the left, who already knows her, <laughs> um, would see that there are scars across the back of her left arm. Um, she is a little bit blood splattered, um, definitely like on her, um, on her armor, um, a little bit across her face. Uh, her skin is paler, but almost like um, uh, but more of an unhealthy pale as opposed to like naturally pale. Um, and she has um, uh, some like scarring on the left side of her face. Uh, and yeah. What race did you say she was? Elf. Okay. I said her, what her, I said she has long white hair, right? Did I know? Yes. That? Right. <laughs> and then sitting next to her is her old buddy. <laughs> um, I'm uh, sitting next to her is a, um, I can't remember how tall she was and I apparently I didn't write Super it down. Tall. She, she was, was like seven <laughs> feet tall. Wasn't she? Like, she was like six two, right? Yeah, she was she's like, incredibly tall. Yeah. Okay, she was like a so like six, like six two. I'm not gonna make her a seven foot tall human because that's <laughs> terrifying. Um, <laughs> She, uh, a very tall, um, uh, early young human woman um, with uh, sandy blonde hair um, twirled up into a big braid that kind of sits on top of her head with little wispy bits sticking out. Um, she is wearing um, armor and uh, which I believe is half full plate. She's got on some armor. She's got, she's wearing some armor of some of a sort. And, oh, uh, it, it is plate. She's wearing plate armor and um, holding a mace across her lap. Um, and that doesn't quite fit. So it extends into the people to your left and right. Oh, yep. <laughs> um, and she, looks absolutely horrified and smells faintly of smoke. Um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, where's her poncho? Oh, obviously she's wearing that. Thank you. <laughs> no further I questions. totally forgot about the poncho. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God, Megan, you've got, you've got Leica's back. Oh, it's like key character point right there. <laughs> yeah, oh God, poncho. Um, she is wearing a over her armor which is kind of goofy looking. Um, she is wearing a Nordic style or Nordic uh, patterned pattern. Thank you. I was like, mm. Nordic patterned, um, very beautiful, but looks like super homemade, thick, comfy looking poncho. Hmm. Would you say it was dummy thick or just regular thick? Um, <laughs> Sorry. I think it's just regular thick. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, also, my character has a long sword strapped to her back, which is probably like 
<laughs> yeah. to the side it's a little like bit. Side side and, like, poking, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. also poking into your back because the chair, yeah. the cushions it's are so firm small. in this chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you guys see each other except for Amalite, who's just in shock and is looking around. Yes, I think Amalite's very, um, well, she's clearly processing something, but also distracted by this gold ornate frame. Um, she's just checking it out. Okay. Leica? Yeah. Amalite did. <laughs> What happened? Did the hag kill you all? Were you able to save the boy? The craziest thing happened to me. I ran into a burning barn to see if anybody in there needed saving and it collapsed on me and I died. Actually, I think that was me. No, that shouldn't be anybody because nobody should die that way. That's the dumbest way possible to die, Laika. I, I, you ran I into a burning someone, barn? I thought there was someone in there. I, heard, I thought I heard something. There was no one in there. And we all watched you die. It was awful. Well, it wasn't great for me either. Pardon, pardon me. Um, uh, sorry, I, I just wanted to get your names down just for the record. Would you mind? Uh, just so I have them for later. Who you the fuck are you? Here? No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, my current guess is either that you are figments of my imagination or I am a figment of your imagination. But in case that isn't the case, and we really are in a different planet plane, something of the case, I would love to just, just have this for posterity because this seems like a very unique situation. So if you don't mind, I would just love, love to, you said something about a burning barn? I, I well, I, I, there was, I thought there were people inside and I went in and I, I could hear, I could hear you trying to get me out, but I, I, I think I, I died and Ray, you're, you're dead. Yes, yes, obviously. But what is your name? Oh, uh, like a sledge runner with like six or seven eyes. Like a. Okay. Okay. And then you also were in the barn, yes? What is your name? Oh, uh, well, my manners, I'm so sorry. My name is Dr. Jerome Frelwich Trillwood Nibbanaka Rumbletack. But you can just call me Dr. Rumbletack if you want. What about Jerry? No one has ever called me Jerry. Yeah. I like it. You can call me Jerry. Great. Can I, what How did you die? Oh, I don't think that's happened. I'm just trying to get notes. What was your name? No, no. Well, if I died and she died, mm -hmm. and I guess Emma let you also. What the fuck happened to our group after I left? Emma Light, you dead. Emma Light, right? That doesn't have to go on the record. Are you dead? That you're dead or your name? I don't, I, you can't be dead. I, I refuse to be dead. I'm not dead. This isn't real. And I'm but, not dead. There's no way I'm dead. I'm not dead. I won't. I'm a light's not dead. I think, I think that, I think that, I think that tracks. I, I, she was alive just a minute ago. I, there's cool. no. And then and your name? Rhea. Rhea. So with a, an H or an E or it's a beautiful name. Thanks. Um, R H E A. Fantastic. All right. So your so your assumption is that half of us are dead and half of us are alive, but we're all in some weird. I have to do like game show. Thing. Oh, I have no idea. I need to collect some more data. And he like no. pulls the book and then like hops off the chair and then takes off uh, out like a set of like um like there's some rulers and there's a protractor and there's like a little <laughs> compass and like just begins to like start taking measurements and like walk around the room and do some sketches and like uh mumble to himself like well it's probably not an intensive formula that wouldn't really make sense here um i think amelite leans across his empty chair now to mm -hmm. like andrea it's like no i'm dead 
but don't tell him because I, I think that'll mess with his data. You can't be dead. You, what, what, what happened? happened? <laughs> to, to me? Oh, yeah. oh, um, well, I was rushing across the street and um, a horse drawn carriage just no. came out of nowhere and rolled right over me. That's what a way to go. That's not what happened to you. There's no way. So I get murdered in battle and then and then then you two just run into things that killed you. I didn't it it was I I, I wasn't playing in traffic. I thought there was someone in the barn and I I shouldn't have gone in, but I thought I heard someone and I wasn't thinking clearly and how are we? How, I felt it. I felt myself burning. I, I felt I'm, but I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just have the sprained wit wrist. <laughs> yeah. It's a gauntlet. It's a gauntlet. It's just, just, she's LARPing also while we play. It's fine. Um, I, I, I don't, I, my arm came off. I felt it. I, my mace, my mace was, 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 pulled out of my arm and my arm went with my mace and and now i'm here and the mace is in raya's lap raya's dead i'm dead you didn't get hit by a cart there's no way you did that's not what happened you you everyone else was supposed to be fine you were supposed to keep you were supposed to keep going um raya's just gonna put a hand on like a shoulder and just go deep breaths Am I even breathing air? Is this air? Are my lungs even working? Does it feel like air? Does I don't it feel know like you're what breathing? Air feels like. I know what smoke feels like. You don't remember breathing? How to breathe? From before? <laughs> from before that? Yeah, just a couple deep breaths. If it feels like it's air, that's all that matters right now. I think Amolite has stood up and is now following the little man and just trying to like she's very intrigued by him um sort of like the way a cat would be interested in <laughs> measurements a toy. i think you've got yeah. like a good four feet on me or so something mm -hmm. I'm like 211 i think uh so i'm real short <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, he's uh interested and i think as she's following him yeah he, she i think she would probably tap him and say um, yes um, oh yeah um amylite miss amylite yes just just amylite is fine i think you're dead you just said that we it's possible the circumstances i last remember are a little dicey but it's also entirely possible that this is a dream or a hallucination or you or I are in a coma. Uh, there are many possibilities here and I think we should eliminate all of them before we automatically assume that what has been presented to us is the case. That's not very scientific. So you well, think it makes more sense that you're somebody else's hallucination than that you are yourself an individual in an afterlife? I'm just trying to consider all the possibilities, Miss Rea. All right. Um, well, as you say that, I need everybody to roll perception checks or give me your passive perception if you don't feel like rolling, which um, whichever you want to do. I want to roll a dice. Roll also, a dice. Um, use Hunter's Bane, um, so I can get advantage on in intelligence checks to recall information about undead, and I want to see if I yeah, do it. If this checks out for me at all. I get to use my Leica dice. I know, I use my Leica dice. Hey. Uh, I got a 16. Jerry, you got a 16? Yes. Okay. Leica? Leica got a 23. Hey. Amalite? Well, uh, I have passive perception of 18, so I'm just going to use that. Okay. Um, and then, Rhea, we're going to do your intelligence check in one second. Um, so as I have Jerry- I 17 perception. Thank you. As Jerry says his shtick of like, we may be in a coma, I need all the facts. 
I need to know what's going on. The uh, purple dragonborn behind the window who's flipping through her very oh, large God, book just her. goes <laughs> and looks up at you all and then looks back at her book. Um, Rhea, what did you get for your intelligence check? Um, so just add my intelligence, right? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, you, can do, you can do a history or a religion. Okay. Um, uh, whichever one is higher. Love it. I'm not proficient in either, so 21. Okay. Um, so from what you can remember, nobody really knows much about the afterworld. You know that being undead would mean that you've been brought brought back to Param as a different sort of a creature, or you, you know, like that resurrection and revivify and everything, that's different than being undead. Mm -hmm. If you were an undead creature, you would have been brought back as like a zombie or a, or a ghoul or some something of that sort. Okay. Uh, but this does not seem to be a brought back scenario. Okay. This seems to be like whatever is going on. Like you've always heard from rumors and legends that when you go, when you die, you sort of go to a place of darkness, but no one's ever really said, there, there aren't any religious theories about what that place is. Okay. okay. Laika, if you want to do a religion check as well. I was going to ask if you would yes. be cool with that. Mm -hmm. I have a sidebar while she's rolling. Uh, yeah. Timmy and the Darkness is a badass oh, band. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so great. You're so right. Very cool. Fuck yeah. That is a great. Yep. Um, I got a 13 for uh, religion. From what you can remember from what your teacher told you, uh, there is not a lot about the afterworld that you, that matches up with where you are right now. Okay. From what he told you, it was like, you dissolve into the universe and into the force of light and like become light yourself. And if you've done well enough on Param, then you elevate to the next level of being basically. Very like, you know, Mormon. we all, what? <laughs> very what? Mormon. <laughs> I guess very Mormon. Very, very much like you sort of, your spirit dis dissolves into goodness and you join the collective goodness I am and one with the force. Your spirit, yeah, basically you, you become one with the force and you go to sparkle heaven. But ah, yeah. this doesn't really seem Not like sparkle heaven. No. Okay, cool. And Nobody ever mentioned anything about a giant skeleton monster. No, no. And I don't think like I ever expected to see her friends in her. In her heaven. Or to see anything. I think, yeah. I think Laika thinks there's something. Like is super confused right now and upset. She's like having a hard time. She's probably crying a little bit. That's like right. not loud, but just like. Oh, oh. Um, can I, can I make another roll for, but do fiends this time instead? Come on. Hunter's major since I did, okay. I rolled so last time I rolled a five and a 19 this time. Well, I have 19 and then a five, and this time I rolled a five and then a 19. Just FYI. Uh, <laughs> my dice is here. Right. Um, it's another 21. Um, what are all the things? Remind me what your Hunter's Bane covers. So it's just uh, fey, fiends, or undead, and it's intelligence, to recall, uh, intelligence checks to recall information about them. Okay. Um, so I think... For her, this would be also like have to do with her backstory if she thinks mm -hmm. that this could be tied in there, or um, if she thinks that the skeleton monster might have been um, a fiend. Um, um, from what you can remember, this seems to be separate from fiends and fae and undead. This seems to be an extra extra planar but not the planes you're thinking of thing like this right. doesn't seem like it's you don't remember anything like this being mentioned about the nine hells or the abyss or anything along those lines okay. um or anything like this in the fey wild although out of the two you know it could be a place that not a lot of people have been to or that people go to and never come out of and that's mm -hmm. why you've never heard of it okay 
Um, cool. But it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't spark any memories no, of things no you've learned. Cool. Mm -mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no meows. Uh, Dr. Rumbletack is going to go up to the Dragonborn and be like, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, I'm just a taking some interviews very uh, close. Um, would you mind just taking a, a couple of minutes? I would love to hear your story. You, you would love to hear my story? Yes, I would. I, I'm Dr. Rumbletack. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you. You are so tiny. Yes, I get that a lot. Ah. Uh. Doctor, you can see that on her, she's got a little like, hello, my name is tag. Uh -huh. And her name tag reads Matilda Frost. She's like very slight of frame and she's really like sort of leaning far over her counter to see you because you're so tiny. Um, my story is that I work in the waiting room of Afterworld. This is like the reception desk. Do you have your ID? Uh, uh no uh I oh i'm supposed to tell you afterworld is spelled capital a after capital w world all one word that is very helpful thank you very much that's not helpful at all um also, you need to what? tell us what we're doing here and who are you and what is this place can, can like a stand up and can the chair get stuck to her armor <laughs> yes <laughs> Ray will just sort of like comes with you yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like reach up and like pull it off. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Where, what, what are we, what ID? What sort of ID? I, I don't think I, I don't think I understand. I don't think I understand what we're, what we're doing here or where we are or who this is. None of this is possible, but I don't have my ID. Rhea's going to take out a dagger and like slice her palm. Ah! Oh. Sorry, Dr. Dr. Rumbletack like, is going to walk over uh, and like take a look at her hand and like, may I? Sure. He's going to like press into your wound really hard. All right, she doesn't wince. Huh. Can I smack his hand away? Ow! Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. That, you Huh. Actual physical pain. Fascinating. I mean, are we this ID? I don't know if this is all I got. Oh, you're trying to give me your blood as your identification. I mean, a lot of people try that, but that's not what I'm looking for. Mm. It's more like papers. Like, do you have papers that prove who you are? Uh, no. No. No, 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 no. Oh, Nobody right. ever has IDs. They should, I don't know why they keep having me ask. I should just, <sighs> and she goes behind her desk and takes out four folders and hands them out to you. She goes, they should just, <sighs> I should just give folders right off the bat. I don't know why <sighs> I'm going to complain to management. I'm going to do it one of these days. I promise. Matilda, can I ask you a question? Uh, would, you yeah. have, uh, would you have let us sit in these chairs for the rest of eternity and not said anything to us until one of us mentioned that we're in this space? Because we were here for a long time and you didn't do anything. Well, you guys didn't walk through the line. I mean, you still didn't walk. Technically, you walked like around my line, but you know. She has a point. Fine, whatever. Line? But yeah, I mean. Wow. This girl's my hero. No, this, I, I want like... this job. <laughs> It's called the waiting room for a reason. So I just like wait for you to be ready. Ready to do what? Move on uh, to the next step of gaining your new life. What happens next? I don't. Oh, well, okay. So you've got, here's your Girl. folders. What you need to do is you need to fill them out and then you're gonna need to take them to the, you're gonna need to take them to the department of memory. Okay, so then like there, once you're there, You'll have to do a memory trial. And once you complete the memory trial successfully, then you'll have to take everything to the, um, the uh, what was it called? It's like the Department of Identification, the identification. Everything's got really stupid names. So throughout all Get of this, to... like post, post hit uh, from Lakia, uh, like Dr. Rumbletack, 
Leica, sorry. Leica. Leica. Yeah, yeah. Leica. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, so Dr. Rebeltak is just like, has like the pace of his writing has slowed and you can see that his eyes are starting to dart a little bit and his breathing is getting really shallow and he's just kind of seems like he's not entirely here anymore. Doctor? Doctor? I think Amalite picks him up so that they're at eye level and says, I'm going to wave in his face as she does this. Doc? Doc, are you with us? Doctor. Mm. You know what? You should probably take him to the welcome center. They'll like answer your questions because- Oh my God, Matilda. I don't want to. You just drop the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> if Rhea's close enough, she'll try and catch him. Give me uh, an acrobatics check. Oh, I feel like, well, Leica's right there. I think Leica would probably just- <laughs> Give me oh, an wow, acrobatics check. Higher than I thought it would be. Okay, 11. so then dear. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. not for Leica. you, Jerry. For oh, Leica sorry. or Rhea, whoever is trying to catch you. Uh, she'll like, Rhea will like flinch, but she sees that Leica's going for it, so she's just going to leave it. Um, but through all of that, uh, Rhea's taken like a small bandage out of her bag and it's just wrapped her hand in it. Why, why isn't acrobatics on my skill page? That Fucking sounds like a you. personal problem, it guys. Is. Hey, <laughs> should be. I told, to told first you to one. check these uh, I, I got before 15. we started. You got a what? 15. 15, all right. Um, you manage to catch Jerry just before he hits the floor and you're able to sort of like catch him and put him down lightly as okay. like both arms. I'm just gonna so give like Amalite a look. I'm I think Amalite looks down at him and says, still think I'm a hallucination? And then turn back to Matilda. Where's the welcome center? Look how little his legs are. He could have broken them. You look to your right, and the skeleton on the wall has transformed into a doorway. Ah! Um, and it did this silently, and it's, you know, so none of you had to roll perception checks for it. But it moved into a doorway so you can exit that. She just goes, the welcome center's outside in the main city. You just have to, I mean, like, it's really... You're not gonna miss it unless y'all are blind, which you're There's a not. city out there? So. Where are we? You're in Afterworld, capital A, after, capital no, W, world, God one is. word. I don't know what that is. Where is Afterworld? Oh my gosh, just go to the welcome center. This is the waiting room. This isn't the answer room. Well, maybe I'm waiting for answers. Is there another door that she like over by her that would have that seems like that would have been where we would go for the memory check or is it just the one door um there is a door there's just the right door there's no door in her little cubicle at all okay okay so the only door in the room is the is the door is on the right one. okay mm -hmm. i i will turn to the rest of and be like i guess we should just go to the welcome center I don't feel welcome, but then I'm going to walk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you look down at your folders, you'll notice they're those nice leather folders that like colleges give out on their tour days when they're like the nice colleges and they want you to go there and engraved on the front of it in pink, it just says LS. Um, and if you open up the folder, you will see paperwork uh, and the paperwork says... Uh, the uh, form is, it's like very mundane at first. The questions are your average questions, age, race, occupation, mother's maiden name, et cetera, et cetera, cause of death. But then it delves more into personal stuff. Like what was your greatest fear when you were six versus just before you died? If you could choose one thing to change about humanoids as a whole, what would it be and why? And did your father love you? And like other things that are very personal that you wouldn't necessarily want to answer. Oh, yes. <laughs> but the, the questions aren't answered. They're just questions there. They're just blank. Okay, I'm gonna put that folder back on Matilda's desk. Don't love that folder. I'll I'm just, I'll grab it. Okay. I, you don't, don't take it, Rhea. There's, it's, it's full of questions. Mm. Uh, do, do these questions have um, uh, time limit? Uh, there's some, some that I, I, I want to think about for a little bit. 
before? Yeah, you just have to fill it out before you go to the Department of Memory. Why? So that the Department of Memory can match you up with who you think you are, and then you can prove that you are who you think you are. Thank you for answering our question. Was that so hard, Matilda? Oh my gosh. Do Listen. some people, are some people really not who they think they are? Like, how do you, how do you come here thinking you are someone else? Why would we have to prove it? I, I know who they are and they know me and here's the doctor also, I guess, but isn't that enough? I'm sorry, do you want new life or do you want to just hang around in Afterworld? Because if you want to just like hang around in the main city and live out the rest of your forever. What is new There life? you can. All right, let's just go to the welcome center. You've been somewhat helpful, Matilda. All right, come on. And I'm just gonna try and like herd people towards the door. As we move towards the door, I'm gonna be like, you really have not been very helpful. The doctor is still kind of standing there. Just I like thing. give you a little, a little push. <laughs> All right. As you all pass through that doorway and you exit out into a small balcony overlooking a city like nothing you have ever seen before. There are tall towers surrounding you, just extending up into the sky in varying oh. heights across the landscape. They're made of some kind of seamless material. It looks metallic. Um, doctor, you think that it might be a metal, but it could also be a kind of gemstone. You're just not sure from this far away. Um, but if you turn around to look at the building you just exited from, it is also sort of a towering building. Mm -hmm. um, and the outside of it, if you get closer, it almost look like, looks like maybe it's made of some kind of obsidian, but it's very difficult to see. Ooh, uh, gonna, to, it, it's difficult to really know. I'm going to take out a chisel and a little okay. and try to like knock off a piece of the exterior. I okay. Want so to give me, not give me let him do that. You want to not let him do that? Amelie blocks, Amelie blocks her. Amelie wants some of the stone. <sighs> okay. I don't know what that is. I've never, what, that, it could hurt us. It's shiny. I don't care. <laughs> All right. So doctor, give me a proficiency check with your woodcarver's tools. Uh, is that just a uh, proficiency, proficiency bonus? Yeah, I'm going to have it be your proficiency bonus, um, and we'll do it. Do you have a plus to your strength or a minus to your strength? Good question. I have a nothing to my strengths. All right, then it's just your proficiency bonus. Uh, 21. 21. All right, you managed to get off uh, a piece of the building that sort of crumbles in two. So you've got a larger piece and then a much smaller piece. Cool. And after it breaks off of the side of the building, the building smooths itself over. God, fascinating. And then he's like, you can see that his lab coat has about like 70 different pockets in it. There's like, there's, it's fairly weighted with like all of the things that are in there. Um, so, so he is going to uh, like open it up and like find like a sub pocket somewhere and like put it in. Emily, Emily kind of taps him on the shoulder first and like puts out her paw. When it, when it smooths yes. over. Oh, like a a nice to meet you. No, no. <laughs> like, what were you saying? Oh, when it, when, it, when it smooths over, like, is gonna, like, put an arm out in between y'all and the terrifying wall. Cool. I think Amelite um, crouches down and says, I'm coming to your level this time. Can I please have a piece of the pretty stone, please? Uh, well, I suppose I did get two pieces. Here you are. And he gives you the... Uh, the smaller of the two stones. Okay. So what do you think it is? I think it's magic. It's a building and it's, it can't do that. Can I make an arcana check to see That's if it's dead? I think, I think anything goes here. Yeah, 17. <laughs> yeah, 17, okay. Well, with that attitude, you have no idea what's going on with the wall. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a nine. I rolled a nine. You rolled a nine and got a 17? Yeah, I really This is what we have to look forward oh, to in the rest of the campaign, yes. man. All right, you, this is not any kind of magic you've ever seen before. 
like the closest that you can think of is that it might be a, a mending spell, okay. but you've never seen one on a scale as grand as that, like a self-repairing building. That's nonsense. I'm going to, I'm going to try to take the piece that we just got and I'm going to try mm -hmm. to like chisel a tiny piece off of it to see if it will mend itself. Okay. You can, uh, take some time on the ground, uh, and like try to chisel a piece off of it. Give me another proficiency check. 15. 15. Mm -hmm. You managed to get a smaller piece falls off of it. Um, but nothing seems to happen to this stone. Hmm. Um, I'm proficient with alchemist tools. Mm -hmm. Would there be anything I could do? Like anything, like, could I use it to see if I can figure out what the stone is in like a quick, like, I don't want to stand here and pull out like a bunch of crap. If you did, I would be so excited. <laughs> <laughs> you would need to like test the stone in your alchemist kit in order to get the kind of results you're looking for. Otherwise okay. you could do a nature check for me. Okay, I'll say, how badly do you really care what this is? Well, it seems fairly fundamental, but to be fair, there's a lot going on. I'm beginning to think perhaps we are dead. Maybe, maybe. I don't, it seems a little. All right, I'll make you a deal. You hold it together long enough, long enough for us to go to the welcome center, figure out what's happening, and if we get to a place where we can like get a little privacy, sit down, I will see what I can do. I I might be able to figure out what the stone is. Do you, do you have magical abilities or scientific abilities, Miss Rhea? Well, in this scenario, it would be I'm good with you know some sciencey stuff, I guess. Really. I didn't peg you as the type. How interesting. We'll have to discuss work later. Great. I look forward to it. How far above ground are we on this balcony? And does it like have a stairwell or did it just open up to this open space? So it opened up to this balcony. You see the, the cityscape. The buildings are super tall. They're sort of glowing a little bit against the star-filled sky to your right is a ramp that goes down and it's a slow ramp, but it does extend about one story before reaching street level. And as you look up, you can see um, there are a bunch of different signs on these buildings glowing in neon colors in a lot of different languages. And there are carts being pulled through the sky. Some of them are being pulled by flying animals, but some of them are just flying on their own. And looking down, you also see there's like a normal roadway crowded with people moving back and forth and some carts that are on the ground and you can reach the street level by this ramp. And it's got like metal fence, like metal fences on either side of it. So you don't, you're not gonna fall off the sides of the ramp. Um, and as you look out as well to your left, once you get down off the ramp, you can see that there is a round building that says, welcome center on it. And the welcome center words are in pink and they're sort of scrolling around the outside of this building. Yes, love it. All right, um, so I think we should just go, I think we should just go to the welcome center, figure out what's happening. Take it from there. All right. Look, look, I'm Amalite. All right. <laughs> 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 in your hearts as you make your way down this ramp you hear and feel uh deepash modes personal jesus start to play as if it's the soundtrack to this next portion of you moving out into the cityscape which i i'd play if i thought that it was you know if we could but i don't think we can so just I'll touch babe. Feel it in your hearts. Dyer's going to sing it for us. We'll put um, it in post. We'll it in post. The Welcome Center conveniently lies just to your left as you walk down the ramp. Situated in the middle of a well-manicured black lawn, it's a perfectly round building that stretches up into a creamy cloud cover against the star-lit sky. The pink letters, not unlike the Afterworld logo that you saw in the waiting room, circle the building. As you pass under the grand arch, the grand entryway, there's no doors, it's just open. 
It blinks with different colors as you pass underneath it. Uh, Amalite, when you pass, it goes purple. Lyca, when you pass, it goes blue. Rhea, red. Uh, Jerry, yellow. And then you are inside the welcome center. In the middle of this circular room is a circular desk made of a nice brown wood. It's not quite mahogany, but maybe it will be someday if it works hard enough and pays its dues. The uh, desk has a wooden sign mounted on, uh, the desk has a wooden sign mounted on it in a lighter wood, and it reads exposition desk. There are several people behind the desk and several people milling about. To your left are waiting room chairs that are the same as the ones from the waiting room. And roll perception checks for me. Actually, what were your passives? Your passives are all very high, aren't they? Uh, 17. 18. You want to roll or do you want passive? I'm 17, pretty sure 18. I would like to roll. Just give me your passives. 12. 12. 14. 14. Okay, yeah, you all see her. There's a small halfling girl who sits hugging herself as she cries uh, in the waiting room chairs. The people behind the front desk are all dressed in the same oil slick kind of looking black fitted suit, but they each have like put their own spin on it like you see in classic boarding school, any uniform school, Catholic school kind of tropey movies where like there's the safety pins or one girl's hiked it up too short and blah, 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 mm. blah. So they've all kind of like decked it out however they want. So you see there's a very attractive purple dragonborn woman. There is a gnome floating on a little tensor's floating disc. And there is a black skinned ASMR with radiant eyes that kind of look like small points of fire. Laika would like to go what you, to the crying What do you guys child. want to do? Where do you want to go in the waiting room? Laika would like to go to the crying child. As you get closer, you see that uh, you're not sure if she's a child or if she's just a small halfling woman. Oh, okay. Um, but she is crying over there. Okay. Laika is going to crouch and say, are you okay, miss? Who are you? I, my name's Laika, I think. Are you, are you a lost soul? Do you not remember who you were? I'm gonna look up at the, the rest of the group and say, are we lost souls? That's a distinct possibility. I, I don't, I don't What's know. What's a lost soul? Souls, sorry. Do you, well, do you, uh, have you, have you proved who you are? Did you get your identification? No. Not yet. But I, we know who we are though, so. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I, I was with a, I was with a group of people, and and we were out in the wastes, and then I, we were fighting something, and then I, I think I died again, and I wound up back here. Again, Waste? not again. Sorry, Doctor Rumbletack. Pleasure to meet you. What was your name? Um, my my name's Tavana. It's a beautiful name. You said you were out in the wastes, yes? Yes, the, the wastes. We were we were on our way to uh to Recordstown. Recordstown, one of our one of our group, the dwarf, he he didn't remember who he was, so we were so we were gonna go to Recordstown for the record of people who who lived and died and, and see if we couldn't get, so you get died, answers. You died in this world? I, th I think I did. I was in a creature's mouth and then I was here. What sort of creature? Um, um, it was giant and, 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 and silvery. I, I was never good. I was never good at identifying monsters. Oh. I was more of like a, like a pick a lock and, and get, get you into a place kind of girl. I wasn't a, I wasn't a go fight a giant beast kind of girl. Um, Arcana or history to know what kind of beast it was. Um, do you have anything in nature? I do. I mean, I'm not proficient in it, but I do have a stat in it. You can try. You can try history. Okay. Oh no, I don't. Weird. <laughs> Twenty-six. Hey. Um. Since you have absolutely no idea what the wastes are, or what kind of monsters would even be around here or in them. 
Um, I mean, your brain is running through several large monsters that have giant mouths. Mm -hmm. And so it could be any one of several different things, but depending on what kind of waste the wastes are, which you don't know what kind of waste the wastes are, you can't narrow it down further besides the handful of like monsters that have large mouths that you already know of. Um, how, how far are these wastes from here? Um, they're pretty much directly when you get out of the city. Huh. So much... the city is surrounded by by wastes with large beasts. Wastes in between cities. If you if you oh. don't mm -hmm. live in a place, then you are pretty much. Um, how how many cities are there here? There's there's at least two cities. There's this and there's Records Town, but I know that you're. To, you have to travel too to get to the I identity council after you find out if you're a lost soul or not and everything's just separated really far away from each other it just seems like a bad setup and i they say that it's param's fault but i i just i just want to live again again Do you know who this param is? Because they were, the darkness was talking about uh, them, like we should know that, but I've never heard of a param. Well, well, param's the, param's the planet, the planet, the planetary day, the pla param made the planet. The planet's called param and param made it. I kind of like look at everyone else in the group to see if like, am I the only one who doesn't know this? But I know this with my history stuff. Uh, you, you would know this. Yes, that's actually correct. Uh, the, both the planet and the god are named the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But this isn't on our planet. Possibly. I, well, I think it's attached to it. It's like the deity's version of an afterlife, I guess. This isn't the afterlife. Yeah. This is all wrong. There's not supposed to be anything. It's it's supposed to be, you're supposed to, it's supposed to be better than this. It's, it's... I'm just gonna go over and walk up to the front desk. Mm -hmm. I think it's be like, think, what's um, going on? I think while you guys were talking to the halfling, Amelie walked over there. Cause she was like, this girl doesn't have answers. <laughs> okay. um, um, but yeah, you can definitely join me over there, but that's where I've been. Who would you have flagged down to talk to? There's the gnome, the dragonborn, and the ASMR. Um, ooh, probably the ASMR, because I feel like we just kind of had bad luck with the purple dragonborn. Um, <laughs> okay. So I feel like I would probably go over and like, okay. all I want to do is feel that fabric. And I'm just trying to figure out the most normal way to do that. Okay. You approach and he sort of like uh, looks up from the desk and you can see now that there are small black sort of screens inlaid into the desk. And he goes, uh, yes, how can I help you, miss? Um, well, we're oh, by the way, just to clarify, because I know this will probably come up, uh, he's hot. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like, I figured everyone would assume, but yeah. you know, he's hot. Okay. The dragonborn's hot. The gnome, maybe. Um, okay. Well, um, I'm just a new girl in town looking for some answers, and everyone told me this was the place to go. It is. Thank you for coming to the welcome center. My okay. name is Tulan Ankbeth. Tulan. Nice to meet you, Tulan. My name is Amalite. Hello, Amalite. Welcome I, um, to Afterworld. I didn't expect myself to say this, but I think I'm happy to be here. And she kind of like reaches a paw out and like strokes his arm on the desk. Oh, what does the fabric no. feel like? <laughs> Damn, Amalite, girl. <laughs> The, the fabric, fabric slow down 
Is it so oily? The, is it silky? What is it? It's not oily. It's like that very nice suit fabric, but it's got little bumps all over it. <laughs> And okay. you can feel that all of those little bumps are what make it look oily. It's like shiny little spots. I think as soon as I like touch his arm, I drop the entire facade of flirt and I like mm-hmm. immediately like crouch down and I'm like trying to feel it and just figure out what it is. <laughs> and I look up at him and I'm like, this is incredible. What is this place? Uh, this is afterworld. You're, you're dead. This is this I is get... the afterlife on Perim. How do I get a suit like this? Well, to get the official suit, you'd have to work for any of the departments on Afterworld. Look, but, I didn't see that when I was alive. I don't see it happening now, but but if you are strong enough, you might be able to manifest this suit or this fabric on your own. And so now I want you all to write in your notes section, manifest. This is a new skill that you're all going to have. Ooh. There's what? actually a way to create a custom skill on d Is now. there? Really? Great, then I'm gonna do that later on. Um, <laughs> Everybody add yourself to the thing. Oh yeah, if you go to skills, in D and D Beyond, yeah, and then you click Add Custom Skill, yeah, and then you can add, you can like mark whether you're proficient with it or add any of that stuff. Tulund is explaining this to you as well. He's like, uh, "Miss Amalite, you you can hear since you're dead. Many people work on manifesting the things they want. That's how this city has been built, and so you can." find someone I assume you're still like all oh, yeah. over his court coast. so he's just like holding out his arm to you like he doesn't quite know what to do but he's letting it happen um because this is the welcome center and you should feel welcome uh, if you get trained in it by someone who is excellent at manifesting you'll uh, be able to do it better and, and Wait, create the things you want I can anything if you're a uh, talented enough manifester who's, yes who's the best manifester in town in the whole world i don't care uh the best manifestors you'll find them at the top of the mountain okay i'm just gonna assume that that's enough information and i will go from there what a world here, I- here. and he he brings up on his screen a little map and so you see now that there is an area um, called Main City, where you are, and it's beautiful and it's colorful and it's ridiculous. Uh, and it just says, it's got one of those little arrows that says, you are here. And then it's wastelands and several miles away. You assume, you know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell because this is you know, the afterlife, um, is a small circle that's full of sort of uh, more sand colored and kind of uh, clay made buildings. And it just says Records Town. And then over to the right in the opposite direction is this mountain that's got sort of a sparkle, sparkle cloudiness up top. And it's called, uh, it's called the mountain, um, the mountain of enlightenment. And so then at the top, he goes, that's the top of the mountain. The best manifestors are there. They created the mountain of enlightenment for themselves to live on. Wow, this is an incredible welcome center. Do I get to keep this screen here, this thing? Uh, did you get an identification folder? Oh, I sure did. And he takes he, like <laughs> digs through her pockets. He's like, I know I put it somewhere. Um, do you find it? Oh, you kept yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kept he it. takes it. He takes it from you and fiddles around a bit behind the desk, and uh, adds a paper to your to your folder and hands it back to you. And he goes, "Even lost souls deserve to have a map of the afterworld." And what like one of those too? Yeah. Certainly. Um, anybody who gives him a folder, he'll put an insert of the world map in it for you. I have been like sort of standing between the two groups. So like mm-hmm. the groups talking to the gnomes or whatever. But when he brought up the map, I joined them fully. Oh, uh, yes. Hello. Uh, and as he sees you, he does a double take and he goes, oh, oh my, do you, you're going to need that looked at. What? Um, and he just goes, uh, may I? 
it depends on what you're trying to do. No, just let him do it. His suit is amazing. <laughs> That's how you judge a person? Okay. So I am. And he goes, with your permission? And his hand is his hand is slowly moving like right over your heart. I'm gonna like grab his hand and be like, what are you trying to do? Your your contract, it's no good here. What if I'm returned to life? Then you well, the darkness is willing to rework any contract. I, I can get someone from the contract department to come down and rework it for you so that it works here so that it's with the darkness instead of whoever you've made it with i'll take my hand away and he presses against your heart and rips out a paper from it he goes oh yes this is you'll want a new one of these if you'd like to use powers in the afterworld unless you don't want to use powers in the afterworld in which case you can have it back no i'd like powers when he rips it out, I'm going to like be like, Raya, and run over to her. Um, okay. And he's sort of like hold up a hand, like it's fine. Yeah. He's gone behind the desk and picked up a uh, stone. It looks like a, make an arc, actually make Arcana checks for me. Telephone? Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, 24. 24? Nope. Ooh, give me a... Doctor, are you looking at what's happening at the exposition desk? I just turned because um, uh, Leica turned and and so yes. Oh, I, that's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Amalite, what did you get? Oh, I got a seven. Great. Nine. Nine. Uh, Leica? What was it? Arcana? Arcana, yeah. <laughs> uh, 19. 19. All right. Uh, Leica, you're pretty sure. Jerry, you're 100% sure. He's picked up a sending stone, although it's unlike any sending stone you've ever seen. Usually they're sort of a blue color. This one's got a veins of pink running throughout of it, uh, throughout it. And Tulan just goes, uh, we need someone from the contracts department to come down right away. Yes, thank you. And he puts the stone back behind his desk and he goes, Miss, the, Miss Raya, They'll be with us momentarily. Thank you for your patience. And he puts the contract in front of him um, on the desk. Is it like face up so anyone can read it? Yes. I'm going to just reach out and flip it over. <laughs> when, he, when, okay. he, when he moves away from her, I'm going to like grab her shoulders and be like, what are you okay? What did he just do to you? I'm fine. I'm fine. He's just. What's that? He just took the. What? How, what? <laughs> like a calm down he just i made i made a deal i made a deal with someone to get some powers and he's just gonna transfer it from me what, how, what, why was it in your chest did it hurt i'm like kind of patting her down yeah. being like, <laughs> yeah uh, it didn't hurt no. you didn't feel anything it kind of felt like a, ugh, but it was just like a little bit of a pull it wasn't anything crazy i like grab your hands and i stop you like i'm fine <laughs> I don't like this place, Ray. I'm real confused. I know that's why we're here at the Welcome Center. They're gonna You're welcome. Explain things to us. I want to go home. I don't even. Well, that's the goal, right? We we do what they say, and then they send us home. But we died. Resurrection's a thing. We don't get to go home if we're dead. Um. Yeah. Amalite, while they're having this conversation, you notice off sort of in a farther corner that the wall opens up and a squat lizard person sort of scrambles out. They're also in the same kind of suit, um, but all of the all of the the ends of the garment are just like too short. It's like someone put on an ill-fitting suit, um, mm -hmm. and he scrambles over and just goes too long. You said there's there's a contract needs adjusting. And Tulon puts it over the desk, and you hold up a finger. He goes, "Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right." I'm Bella, Belbeth, Belbeth. I'll be uh, I'll be adjusting your contract so that it it works here in the afterworld. And he takes the pages and and uh, separates them all from each other, and starts to fold them in on themselves. And he keeps folding and folding until he's made a little paper hat. And then he goes, bend down, bend down, please. What am I agreeing to? 
It's just rewording your contract so that it works with the darkness instead of with your previous patron. Am I, what am I giving the darkness in return? Uh, what were you giving your previous patron in return? A favor at some point? Doing a little something for them? You'll just have to do a little something for the darkness. Um, all right, she'll very slowly lean down. Um, he places the paper hat on your head so that its points are out this way instead of this way. And as soon as it touches your head, uh, you all see it sort of poof into black smoke with little iridescent bits inside of it, and it's gone. Uh, and you don't, you only feel different in that. You didn't realize it before, but you've got access to your magical powers again. Like a no kind of oh, a swats at the smoke. She's like, <laughs> um, no offense, Terea, but you did mention that you were like kind of pale when you first woke up. Does this like bring back any color or life or anything, or is it just is she still pale, or was that unrelated? Unrelated. Uh, okay, I would assume. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's just cool. really, really white guys. It's fine. Good to know. Um, Bellis uh, wipes off his hands and just goes, bah, that's all we need. Uh, and then he looks at like, uh, you seem to have a promise that you made to some some goodness there. Do you want to do you want to rework that while I'm here? Don't I don't know what I don't know what your deity. Do. I don't think their powers I mean, you're, extend here. Well, since it's the afterworld, the, the good and light still work. It's the it's the fiendy, feyish, genie, archetype nonsense where it's like a, a being that has thoughts and feelings versus a general idea. That's when you really have to reword the contract so that they get back to, to what they need to be. But we can, we can shake up that oath for you if you want. What, what do you mean? Yeah, you're, 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 uh, you're, uh, <laughs> and he licks, he licks his finger and he goes to touch you real quick and he manages to get a part of your uh, body that is exposed skin, like your hand or something. It's probably oh, okay. I was like, oh my God, do I have any? But yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably your hands. Um, and he just goes, yeah, this is, a, this is an oath of uh, redemption, right? If I, if I'm right. You feel you have to things you need to apologize for. Mm. Uh, no, I I, I think I'm. I no. Think... Insight check. You're, you're all right. You're fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can all insight check that. Sure. I got a four. <laughs> <laughs> She definitely, Jerry, she's got nothing she needs to apologize for. She's clean as a whistle. She seems like the most cinnamon roll awesome. of all of these girls. <laughs> I know she's lying. I'm not going to roll an insane check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could easily change that to, uh, you know, uh, Oath of Conquest. Those are fun. Oath to the Crown. Both would be to the darkness. It could be a fun time for you. Doing that. All right, all right, see yourself, see yourself. What would changing it? But but that's just how I feel. How I can't do that. I'm not doing that. Okay, uh, it's up to you. And and don't touch me. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sometimes I just you know move without thinking. You know, it's a hazard of the job. Okay, well nobody else has any kind of contracts that they need reworked, so uh, I'm gonna go back upstairs, fill out the paperwork for this one, and uh, see you later. See you later, Talon. And he he gets himself. He doesn't have anything. He gets himself together emotionally and spiritually, and goes back <laughs> to the doors that open up and leaves. Um, I turn to Raya, and I'm gonna say. You have a deal with someone. Who do you have a deal with? I'm gonna try and lower my voice, but I'm not gonna do a very good job at it. Gotcha. Well, now I have a deal with the darkness, whoever that is. Why would you do that? What? Because if we do have to go out and fight some giant monster, I don't wanna be powerless. Well, you're not powerless. You, you'd never, you could never be powerless. I mean, I can use this sword, but where did you think I got my magic from? I don't know, Some somewhere. 
maybe like how I have my magic. I, I just thought you were, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know there was a, there was a, someone else. Sounds like we're dating. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were seeing was, someone else. I, just, <laughs> I didn't know. You can have a conversation about being exclusive. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't know what you were exclusive. Honestly, this ch- conversation checks out, though, for a paladin talking to somebody else about a contract that yeah. they made. So <laughs> oh, it's fine. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't understand. I didn't. You, you could, could you have taken it? Could you have gotten rid of it completely, do you think? Maybe we could call him back? I appreciate it, Laika, but I have stuff I have to do and I can't do it without magic. Tulan, Tulan just goes, you have unfinished business. Right, I just sort of... <laughs> And yeah, he makes a, buddy. He makes a face. <laughs> most souls do. Param is not the most uh, uh, congenial of deities. They think it's funny when people die in funny ways. None of us died in funny ways. I don't know. Emily walked into the middle of the road and got hit by a car. I'm pretty so. sure that was a fucking lie. <laughs> That's pretty funny if she's supposed to be a, you're, you're a tabaxi, yes? Isn't there a, there's a joke about cats always landing on their feet? Yeah, well, not this time. Um, and he just goes, he just says, well, if there's, is there anything else I can do for your ladies today? And gentlemen, sorry. That's, that's, unless that's right. unless you identify as a lady but look like a gentleman. I, I don't, but I appreciate the gesture. Um, do we only those contracts are only for? Give me a second. And he um, so like for his notes, he has like a um, like a pouch of ink and a quill, and he's been kind of dipping and like writing as he goes. And he takes out like a knife from his wood carving tools and just like, like carves a little bit off of the quill, just slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, and as he's doing it, he sort of angles it in a cur- certain way and then casts light on it as a cantrip. Um, and then it's like, can, can you all see this? Does this work? You all can see, see the light, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. And like... It goes away. Um, I think while Laika and Rhea were um, also talking about contracts and stuff, I probably pulled the doctor aside and was like, "Have you um, have you ever seen one of those screen things before? Is that no with the, the math No, that's that's fascinating. I would love to get my hands on one of those. I think I would too, and I." Want, when this is finished with Toulouse, what was his name? I'm sorry. Talund. Talund. Um, I'm going to saunter back over and probably sit on the desk. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm going to cast Suggestion um, okay. and say, you should give me one of those screens. All right, let's check this out here. Suggestion. I have to roll a save. Um, you must make a wisdom, wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. What is your DC? Remind me again what that is. Um, all right. What would what do you suggest to him? Um, that he should give us one of the screens. Oh, uh, uh, Miss Amelite, I can't get it out of the exposition desk. And you see as you're sitting on there that it's sort of inlaid into the wood. Um, and he like runs his finger around it and it looks like it's part of the desktop. And I can't, I, I can't allow you to, to cut, cut the desk apart to, to get it out. Dr. Rumbletech has his what? and hammer and just goes, oh. <laughs> but you could, you could attempt to manifest, manifest it. Yeah. Okay. Let me go find the mountain. 
sorry. Well, if you if you work together to manifest, you and you and the doctor here, you seem the most interested. Maybe you might have a better chance. How, how does one manifest? Well, you if you meet the manifestors. You, if you think really hard about something, then you can try and create it in afterworld. But it is very difficult. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't think that's usually how it works. There's usually some kind of, um, you know, you have to go within the structures of an existing object or deity magic. It seems that, that seems strange. Is that a different type of magic that happens here in this maybe imaginary world, possibly real, if we're actually dead world? I still haven't figured it out yet. It is easier to create and manifest things if you have a components to make it together and there are people in the city who sell different components and and things of that nature to create things to make it easier for oneself without going to the mountain um, but you can if you are good enough at manifesting just create things on their own and like could try it yeah like you can try it what do i roll you roll a manifest check so you don't add anything to it because you're not proficient in it and it is going to high DC. Uh, I got three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think really, wrong. really hard about the black screen thing. And oh, um, no, try and manifest like a, what were you trying to manifest? Uh, like a pastry. Oh, like a little pastry. Yeah. Um, suddenly you all smell a baked good, but there's nothing around. I like whip around, like I'm like. It's just the smell. Did you smell that? Tulund says, uh, small items that are common items are and less complicated, are easier to manifest than uh, say the screen would be. Did you try to create a baked good, a pastry? I did. So you you did something. You got the smell. I, I made that smell. You manifested the smell of the pastry. Uh, Rumble Tack is going to walk around to other people in uh, the welcome center and mm -hmm. ask them if they smell it also. Um, <laughs> just to like collect more data about it, see if there's like some like bias inherent in the group. <laughs> Everybody smells it. Um, you go back to ask. Uh, Tevana, if she smells it, and she's gone. Yeah. Perception check to see where she went. Sure. Ah, 21. You have absolutely no idea. She probably left the building while you guys were talking to, to Lund, is what you assume. Okay. Or maybe she um, manifested herself somewhere else. Who knows? All right, so you look around. Uh, she is nowhere to be seen. You think she, maybe she manifested herself away. Maybe she just walked away. It's hard to, it's hard to say because she is missing. Make it a note of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn to Toulon and say, mm -hmm. what is this memory test thing that they've been telling us about? Well, you will go to the Department of Memory and undergo a memory trial to prove that you are who you say you are. Uh, Roscoe Dirt will set it up for you and you'll have to go in, usually with whatever companions you are with, and uh, survive what killed you. I fucking love that name. I just want survive what killed us. Basically, yes. No. In order to prove that you are who you say you are. Wait, do we, sorry to interrupt, yes. rude of me. Um, is that like a, we do that on our own? That's like a solo thing or do other people? Usually everyone helps you who is in, who you no, sort of come back with together. You don't um, want to do the memory trial? I don't want to do the memory trial with anybody else. I don't want do anyone you, in there. I don't, I don't do want, want to. to you don't want to do it at all? I'll do it. No, I'd love to do it. I just don't want anyone to see how I died. Question, how, what's the logic in we're proving ourselves 
by surviving the thing that killed us, if in, if we are ourselves, shouldn't we die from the thing that killed us? It's a trap. Getting your identity is the first step. Verifying who you are is your first step towards new life. Can't we verify each other? I know them. I know they know me. I Isn't that enough? Please, I... And new what? life, does that mean we are, we are currently dead after this will we be alive again in Perrin? Yes. Did you not watch the welcome video? No, you guys. The welcome video. <laughs> The darkness, when what? you're in the waiting room, the darkness has a speech that they give. It is played, oh, yeah, it, is, we saw that. it is like a, an, an illusion, a, it plays. Okay. The we darkness made little, it to introduce everyone. We were a little distracted by the chairs and the Timmy and the bones. I, for one, did not absorb any of that content. Would you like to see it again? Can I get like a synapsis? <laughs> sure. It's like I'm fast forward. So <laughs> you're on point two times speed? Yes, please. Yes. please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Say it really fast in that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. Don't tell me. <laughs> Here we're going to insert the clip of me doing it the first time, but Megan's going to yeah, play it at two times speed. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, didn't see you there. I'm the darkness. Don't worry, I'm not gonna eat your soul yet. I'm just here to help you transition to new life. You heard me right, new life. It means what you think it means. You're dead. But don't worry, we in the afterworld understand that most of the people who die on Perrin do so with unfinished business. I'm sure you're familiar with this little trickster, Perrin, planetary deity. Enough. Consider me Perrin's foible. While they like playing tricks on everyone, I only want what you want. Your timely return to Perrin. Unfortunately, Perrin in their bright wisdom. Decided to hamper my progress with red tape. <laughs> Dailies, am I right? Anyway, cue up, my dears. You're dead, and there's only one way out of this room, at least. Uh, but if everybody could roll insight checks for me. Twenty-four. Seventeen. Uh, Jerry, you got a seven. And Leica. Yeah. Pterodactyl scream. That's not a number. She rolled a pterodactyl. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well, good sorry. news is the DC was a pterodactyl. No, just kidding. Cool. <laughs> what, what was, what, sorry, what, insight? Insight. Uh -huh. Oh, hell yeah. I'm so good at insight. Uh, I always forget. Three. What? 43? 20. 23. Okay. I got one higher. I win. <laughs> you did. All right. Laika and Rhea. Um, you glance at each other as the darkness brings up new life and you're like i don't i don't know if this is like as good as the darkness is pitching it there's got to be a catch there's got to be a catch to this new life thing um amelite and jerry you're like all right new life resurrected back on param complete my unfinished business sounds legit, sounds legit. i want it yeah, like sometimes creatures who are made of darkness or who seem like evil on the outside aren't actually evil on the inside. So you don't want to judge a book by its skeletal monstrosity. And I'd like to get back to the earth. Yeah. Um, so those are the, the highlights of it. And then Tulun goes on to explain that, yes, once you have verified your identification, which if you had come in with verified ID, then the darkness would have been able to send you back to Perrin right away. So once you've how, got your ID completely verified, you can be sent back. How would we have gotten verified identification on Param? Is there like a DMV we don't know about? <laughs> that I don't know. I died before that was ever put into place. Well, I, I have not pursued getting identification for myself. I pretty much got the level that uh, allows me to work in Afterworld. I have no interest in returning to Perum. Let's say there's someone we are interested in finding who is no longer on Perum. Is that possible? 
Yes, you could go to, hold on one moment, I'm getting another call. Yeah, hey. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> Where is everyone? Are they not in the house? No. <laughs> no one's in the house except us? No. My cousins and my parents are supposed to be in the house except my dad, but my sister just came to be like, what's happening? After helping the lost soul who just like butted into your conversation at the exposition <laughs> desk. He's a really good multitasker, that Taloon. I got to tell you. Is great. He looks back at you and he goes, oh, what were, oh, yes, you were asking about how to find someone who is dead already. Yes? Yeah. So you will need to travel to Recordstown. And he brings it up on his little screen. Recordstown has a the most accurate as possible records of who is alive and who is dead and where they might be in either plane. Well, uh, um, just really quickly, um, Miss Rhea, I believe that was the town that our, our halfling friend was talking about. Yeah, that they got attacked on the yes. way to it. Is it dangerous to get to Reckon's town? Uh, yes, it's dangerous to go anywhere outside of a city. What happens if you die? In Afterworld. Oh, it's, if you die in Afterworld, you just come back to the Welcome Center. Oh. Huh. You, you do tend to uh, lose things. If you had items with you, maybe from your previous life or that you had manifested, you tend to lose all of those items, but you do wind up intact back at the Welcome Center Where did the items in Main go? City. I would like to insight check that. You can insight check that. I would too, actually. Mm, 16. He seems, well, we should wait till Leica rolls. Nine plus seven is also 16. That's yes. Fair. That's um, what I rolled. I rolled a nine plus seven. Really? Man. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> when people say that math never comes back to help you in your life, it's yeah. just clear they've never played D&D. &D. Um, all right. So you guys get the sense that what he's saying is legit. That okay. souls, when they die again in Afterworld, all their stuff uh, is left behind and they come back to the Welcome Center. But um, the stuff, sorry, Jerry, just really to need to iron this out. The stuff stays where we died or it just disappears. Stays, stays where you died in Afterworld. But we can go back and get it. So I won't lose my stuff. You could go back and get it unless someone steals it. No one's dying here. None of us are dying again. But are other dead people's stuff just lying around out there? I'm alive. If, if it hasn't been moved, yes. Okay. Dead people's what stuff. happens if we do the memory trial? What happens after that? After that, your, uh, your memory trial will be notarized as complete, that it says you are who you say you are, and then you will move on to the identity committee. Wait, we're not finished. And then what do they do? Uh, the identity committee, uh, what do you need in between? In between completion of the memory trial before you get to the identity committee you do need someone who is already dead to verify that you are who you say you are well, we've got can that. we verify each other that i'm not sure i am not uh, i am not an expert in the verification process can, of can being we... who you say you are usually they like it to be someone who has maybe died a while ago who's been an afterworld and can say who you are, but since you all seem to have known each other in well, life, it's generally someone who knew you in life, who can say, ah, this is who they say they are. So if you all knew each other in life, you could verify each other, I suppose. I um, pat the doctor on the head and say, uh, we'll find you someone, buddy. Oh. Uh I've lived a number of years. There have been many people I've known who have passed on before me. Does everyone come through Afterworld? Yes. Everyone. Everyone comes through Afterworld. They don't all stay in Afterworld, but they do all come through Afterworld. In, 
But, well, after, after Afterworld, where do people go? After Afterworld, if it's after Afterworld for them, that usually means they're back on Perim in a new life. But so if we returned to Perim, that's after Afterworld. But if you don't return to Perim, there's no after Afterworld, there's just Afterworld. All right. But you said a new life. Does that mean that we would be reborn as a new person? Um, make insight checks for me. Natural 20. Doctor's coming through. Uh, yes. That is a total of... Uh, are you proficient in insight no matter what? I don't have it marked. Nope. Great. You are not. So I don't add my bonus then? You add whatever bonus is on your D&D Beyond character sheet because they do a great thing where they add in your stats okay. if you don't have a pro proficiency bonus. But if you do have a proficiency bonus, they add in both. So uh, just not, add that we're, um, not that we're sponsored by D&D Not that we're sponsored. We're not sponsored by D&D Beyond. <laughs> They're just we great, just, guys. We just really <laughs> haven't figured it out. Fangirl. <laughs> Fangirl over D&D Beyond. It's just a wonderful tool that does all the math for you. I mean, it does all the math for you, except for the really rolling math. Ask that question. I it gotta, can do the rolling math for it you. It can do the rolling if you math roll for you. In the, if you roll if in the, you browser, roll in the, the app. app. Yeah? Really? It will even tell you, you can roll. If you're doing like a healing spell, you can yeah. choose who you're rolling for, roll in the app, and then it'll inform the other person in the app that someone rolled X amount of hit points for you. Oh. This is the kind of oh. grassroots oh. advertisement <laughs> that you can be doing for. screen, it's really cute. Wait, I just got a Leica rolled custom 11 in Campaign Sirens. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, whenever people yeah, want to roll that's because you, guys, you guys are still stuck in the Sirens campaign, so we oh. need to move you over to this campaign. Um, but that's neither here nor there. That part is neither here nor there. d, &D Beyond, how do we move characters to other campaigns once they're dead? And yeah, campaigns? that's I don't what know. we need to know. You just that's what we're that's what we're trying to figure out next. Um, it's probably just user error that we haven't figured it out yet. Because uh, d, &D Beyond is very competent. Okay, I rolled an eighteen. You rolled an eighteen. We got a nat twenty. Leica, I have a nineteen. Nineteen. Raya, twelve. Okay. <laughs> Um, Talund pauses a moment and just goes, you don't become a new person. You're still yourself, but it is a new life. And so while you are yourself, you are not quite yourself because all of your experiences on Afterworld are added to your new life. Sure, 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 sure. So it's like a meditation <laughs> retreat kind of thing. Does time pass the same it does here as it does there? That I don't know. What about my it body? Can't. It can't because where's I died before either of you, so. Where's my body? Oh, well that, the grouping of you all together, the, that's happened because there's a backup in processing. Um, Can I roll a history check and see if I've heard of anyone who has ever been returned to Param, like has ever come back after being yes. in Afterworld? Oh, you can. You can. Oh. Um, but Megan, Megan, Jerry, uh, Amalite, Jerry, and Laika, when he says about people coming back as themselves, but yet not themselves, Amalite and Laika, it sounds like he might be, he, he doesn't, for a welcome center for the exposition desk, it seems like a piece of exposition on that is missing, maybe. Or it just might be that like, when people come back, they're not quite all there because they've been dead and they can remember being dead. Um, Jerry, with your nat 20, you can tell that he, from what he's saying, like something does not add up. It sounds like he's either got information that's missing or he has been told false information to give out to people. But there's something more that happens to you when you come back from Afterworld, when you get back to Param, but you, you're not sure what it is. Okay, I also rolled a 
14 on my history check to see if I have ever heard of anybody like coming back and being like, I was in Afterworld. You've heard of people coming back to life with resurrection and revivify spells, but you've never heard of someone coming back this way. I got okay. It. Um, Jerry starts to like breathe. Oh. Hold on one second. Laika, what did you get? A seven. Yeah, you have absolutely no, <laughs> no freaking idea. Jerry starts to like breathe a little bit more, like just a, a, with a little bit more frequency and he like flips a couple pages and starts doing some like formulas and he says, I'm sorry, that doesn't entirely make sense because I am a very learned person. I didn't know if you know this, but I'm a doctor. I've studied history a number of times and I've never heard of that type of thing. And also, just the mathematics that would be involved with someone coming back and maintaining the magical integrity and their cerebral functioning and being able to return back across a plane or another planet. I'm not actually sure. Is this in Param? Are we in Param? Are we in a different plane? What exactly, sir, what exactly is happening here? Dead people can't come back. When they die, they die. Hmm. Uh, you're all under a great amount of stress. To answer your question, uh, Dr. Rumbletack, you, what's happening here is that you have died and you are now in what many species refer to as the afterlife or, or heaven or hell or purgatory, whatever you want to call it, you are dead. Now in afterworld, there is a way to come back to life beyond being resurrected or revivified by your friends or loved ones. And that is through getting your identity verified and being brought back to life by the darkness. The darkness is able to, to get your soul back to Perim. But because Perim the Laughter is a trickster god, he has done uh, a great disservice to the darkness who merely wishes to get your soul back to the planet, back into the, the living world, as it were, and has created red tape in our departments so that you have to travel in between them. And then you notice that everybody's got bone antlers on their head, like via, via a headdress, like the Matilda did. Uh -huh. um, and then he looks over to you, Laika, and he goes, you're, you are dead. When you're dead, you, you are dead. But resurrection, you've heard of resurrection and revivify, yes? That's, that's something living do for you. It's not a choice that the dead make. Well, the darkness is not dead. That is why they can bring people back there. They are powerful in themselves. But we, uh, what do we do? Either. Either this is true and we need to do something to get back to reality or it's not true and we won't get any more answers from, from you. So where do we go? Memory trial. Then we have to be verified by someone who's dead and a good identification for it. And then what happens after that? Once you go to the identification co committee and they pass your identification, you are able to go on to the darkness and, and ask to be brought back. Now, I should warn you, the uh, line to get in to see the identification committee has become rather long since processing has been so backed up. But I have heard uh, that the committee can be bribed to move yourself forward in line. I don't know what the current bribe requires. They change it. It changes based on what they desire, but... So yeah. it could be money, it could be items, it could be... It, just not it could be money, it could be items, it could be pieces of your soul. I, I don't know what their fancy is at the moment. So I really, I, I'm just trying to figure this out. It just doesn't add up in my brain. And I really must insist that you give us all of the information that you have. Please do not hide anything from us. I don't know if you know who I am, but my work is very, very important back on Param, and I really, really need, get, need to get back to it. If so, if there's some kind of mistake or some problem, I just can't. And like the quill breaks, uh, and it just goes. I don't. 
I don't think, I don't think you're telling us everything. And I, I would like to insist that you do. I want to cast command. Okay. Um, at the first level. And I want to say, uh, and I want to do it in an intimidating fashion. So I'm like leaning over and I want to answer. All right, what's the will save? That is a 15. Well, of course I'll answer your questions. I, this is the exposition desk at the Welcome Center. I, you, 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 uh, you feel I'm holding information back. I, okay, I, I don't think I got to tell you that when you are, if you die in, in combat or through a circumstance in Afterworld, your friends can resurrect or revivify you to bring you back to the spot where you died so you, they don't have to come all the way back to the welcome center for you. Uh, it requires manifesting your friend back to yourselves and usually you have to give a bit of your soul away to to do it when you're bringing back a person since it's the most complicated of all um well none of us will be dying i so think um amelie has kind of lost interest i feel like i've i'm i'm turning and heading out the door because it's like we're not going to get anything else yeah i'm going to go amelie one sec and I ran to her and, yes, to the doctor and be like, look, nothing makes sense. Sorry, a bunch of fireworks just start going off outside. Um, <laughs> things, sometimes things just don't make sense. And we gotta, we gotta go with it. I think he's telling us everything he's gonna tell us. I think we just have to decide what we're gonna do with the information that we have. Things can here's always the, make sense. Here's the right the amount of knowledge. So I, I feel so perhaps like we should do some experiments in order to gain some additional knowledge from a different source. Uh, I feel like you're not understanding that this whole system was uh, created by the darkness, but then sort of corralled by a trickster god who is a god of chaos. Yep. So you are you're correct that it does not, in a, in a sense of logic, does this follow logic? No, absolutely it doesn't follow logic. But it, so, it sort of does if you if you sort of squint at it I, I and tilt your head. I think it does. That's the point that I'm making. Uh, he looks at Nurea and just takes a minute and goes, do you think we're actually dead? Yes. I know she's dead. I, I buried her. I know she's dead. I watched it happen. I remember dying. I remember dying. I remember everything. He just kind of like sits on the ground and starts to cry. Lyco sits down and puts an arm around him. Raya just looks over at him a light. Lyco offers her um, poncho for his tears. <laughs> <laughs> Amelite sits down next to him and like kind of curls her on the other side and curls her tail around him. But doesn't put an arm around him. And to learn Raya kind of like looks around and then like awkwardly sits on the ground <laughs> and like kind of nods <laughs> as you do that in a tableau of the four of you sitting on the ground we hear the opening chords of betty davis eyes as the camera shoots back outside of the welcome center out to show us a tableau of main city in all its neon crazy chaotic glory out to show us farther out the map of the wastes and records town and the mountain and several other spots that you see on the map but are as of yet unnamed and will become apparent as further sessions occur and 
we, if we, ha we keep panning back, we pan back so far that all you see is in pink with black outlined, the word afterworld. Unfinished business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. It's me, the darkness. Your afterworld deity. <laughs> I just want to thank you for watching. It really means a lot that you signed in to support our new reality TV show. Now, if you could like, subscribe, and follow us on all of our socials, links below, we would greatly appreciate it. That way you will stay up to date on all the shenanigans of our four heroes. <laughs> Oh, and don't worry, episodes may be releasing every other week, but in our off weeks, we'll have more content for you. We're going to have some bonus actions. Well, you'll get to know the cast and crew, <laughs> they're the same people, and see some of their artwork. Now, is it weird that they've made fan art of their own show? Maybe. Are they a bunch of narcissists? We'll find out together. The important thing is that you support Afterworld just like we all support Afterworld. It is a beautiful, magical place that we're all trying to escape from. <laughs> Help us escape by also subscribing to our Buy Me A Coffee page. Yes, we all run on that bitter, bitter, dark liquid. And we would appreciate any help in making sure Afterworld keeps its lights on. <laughs> I'm the darkness, and this has been a message for you. Remember, your champions, your scholars, and you have great boobs. See you in Afterworld. <laughs>